all right so let's look into how we can possibly uh, try and create a equation for this way let's start the oscillations okay this looks like a good oscillation uh, let uh, imagine you were uh, you were a young physicist and are trying to uh, create an equation for this thing first thing you will be looking at this thing why this wave is propagating the wave is propagating because the particles the the be the beads on the string are moving up and down that is one thing you have to concentrate on you would also think that okay this is a mess we have to develop an equation for this thing this is the end of physics there's no such thing which can uh, predict uh, how this wave is propagating it's not like a simple uh, velocity time equation right d equals vt uh, displacement s equals ut plus half it is but it's not that it's a complex equation it's not even uh, a sine function right if i say sine x it's it's not it's not standing in time it's always propagating in time right so all these things we have to keep in mind and uh, try and create equation for this propagation of the wave i mean propagation of the energy the disturbance when our physicists are talking about a wave they are trying to refer two things one they are trying to refer something called video recording and another one they are trying to refer something called snapshot there are two equations which are governing the whole uh, wave propagation so forget all of these things uh, let me try and ask uh, what is the displacement of a bead well you would be thinking what is the displacement of a bead i mean this person has to tell me which bead first right so the first thing you're going to ask me which bead okay i'm going to say what is the displacement of uh, the green bead which is the third green bead right okay fantastic this person told me uh, what is the displacement of the green bead i'm going to say okay okay the displacement of the third bead oh it's always going up and down how do i say oh that is obvious and that is one more thing uh, by the time i say the displacement of this green bead is you know let's keep this highest position or whatever this wave is going to be one so that we can refer as one and minus one by the time i tell you the displacement of the bead as minus one it's already going up and down i mean it could be anywhere like it could be plus one as well so one more thing which you are concerned of is the time right so two things you have to tell me one the position of the bead the two the time at which i want to say the displacement of the bead so if you can freeze both of them then only i can say what is the displacement of that bead right so that is the basic i mean the base which i am referring to create an equation uh, for my energy propagation the disturbance propagation so the equation for a wave depends on two things one the position of the bead uh, this is the source right so what is the position of the bead let's keep uh, 1 meter because let's suppose this is 0.5 meter this is 1 meter this is 1.5 this is 2 meter and 2.5 so each of this green bead are at a distance 0.5 meters from the source right so this is 0.5 meters this bead is at 1.5 meters so when i'm going to ask you what is the displacement of a bead i'm going to say uh from the source it is at 1.5 meters away from the source right this is the source uh, not continuously oscillating so whenever i am trying to draw a displacement position graph of a wave means that i am referring the distance of that particle in this case it's a bead to the source okay so that is the displacement position graph so you told me 1.5 meters fantastic i know 1.5 meters the one more thing you have to tell the time as well by the time i say 2 second immediately it is becoming 3 second so i have to freeze time all right i freeze time so at this moment of time i can say what the displacement of this 1.5 meter bead is because i froze the time now i told you after 2.1 second tell me what is the displacement of the bead and you cannot say okay from this mean position it has covered only uh, 2 centimeters because the whole thing i told you i will take it as a 1 uh, 1 meter or oh, 1 meter is huge uh, let's keep it as 10 centimeters okay so as you can see 
the screen bead is only displaced uh, one centimeter, right? So I have one thing I told you was the position of the bead. Another thing I told you was the what time I want the displacement of the bead. Then only I can say the uh, what is the displacement of that particle at a given time and a given distance x from the source. So if I'm going to develop an equation for the uh, mathematical equation that predicts what is happening in this way. So that function is not a time dependent function. It's not a, a distance dependent function from the source. It is a function that depends both on time and as well as the distance. Oh, that became complex, right? Because we cannot even imagine as a human being, we cannot imagine a function which is only dependent on one variable. Now look at this thing. It is a function which is depending on two variables. So let's talk about what is video record. Uh, let me bring two of these folders and try to concentrate on a single bead. Let's concentrate on this 0.5 meters, 1 meter, 1.5 meters bead. This is the green bead. Okay. I'm going to isolate all other beads so that you can see only this green bead. All right. See what physicists they tried to do when they were trying to create an equation for the wave. What I have done is that I fix the distance so that I do not worry about distance anymore. I chose only that particle which I'm concerned of right now. So my distance from the source, I fix it as 1.5 meters and trying to only look at the equation because this is a equation which is dependent on two variables. So I'm trying to eliminate one of the variable right now, which is the distance itself. I fix the distance 1.5 meters. Now I have to generate a function which will give me the displacement of this bead. So what is this bead doing? This bead with respect to time, it's going up and down. One second is here, the second, two seconds is here, three seconds is here, four seconds is here, five seconds is here. So with respect to time, you can see the displacement of this bead is varying, going down, coming up, going down, coming up. So if I have to create an equation for this, I can simply say sine t, it's going up and down. So it's something it's going cyclic. I can just take a time variable and apply sine function on it. It'll give me this uh, behavior of this particle. So this is what we call as video recording. This is one thing where we fix the distance. So we don't have to worry about the X. So I, whatever the distance, I call it as X and whatever the time, I'll call it as T. So time is varying. Now Y equals sine T gives me the displacement of this particle with respect to time. This is video recording. One more thing the physicist will uh, tell me is that snapshots. What do we need snapshots? All right. What I did, what I essentially did was I froze the time. Now, why did I froze time? What is the use of this thing? In this case, I can measure what is the displacement of each of these beads without having to worry about time at all. Oh, that is amazing, right? I mean, look at this physicist. Look at their mindsets, right? One thing is that initially when I video recorded, I was concentrating on only one particle, one bead. But where it's not like that, it's, it's changing with respect to time, it's changing with respect to distance from the source, right? So I also have to come up with an equation that will give me what is the displacement of each of these beads which is with respect to distance from the source. In order to do that, I have to freeze time. Initially, I froze the distance by covering all of them and only allowing and only observing one particle. Now what I did that, I'm going to observe all of this particle, but at one exact moment in time. This is the frozen time. So if I were to uh, derive and write a function for this thing, you can see it exactly looks like a wave. I don't have to worry about anything else. I can say sine x immediately because I chose the distance from the source as x. Initially it was sine t, now it is sine x. Let's suppose I 
start the overall oscillation okay it's completely going particles are waving and according to distance also the uh, displacement is changing i did a snapshot what is the snapshot i said time equals 5 second what is the displacement of all of these particles as you can see oh, as as the distance changes at uh, 0.5 meters i can see now this is 0.5 meters so at 0.5 meters i can see the green bead the green bead is at 10 cm and as you can see at 1 meter right we took this as a 1 meter it's negative negative 10 cm don't worry about the negative sign just look what's happening so this is 1.5 meters we took as you can see at 1.5 meters it's slightly below 10 cm somewhere around 7 cm and again so with respect to distance also the displacement of the bead keeps on changing so that is the snapshot snapshot is something where i freeze the time and video recording is something where i freeze the distance so so that i can generate two equations and i can merge those two equations the complexity comes in merging those equations right uh, we'll discuss them hopefully we we'll see uh, how we broke down this complex wave propagation so that we human beings can visualize and uh, literally try and give an equation for this propagation of the distance uh, through the medium and this is fantastic right